वेलकम बैक टू एस एल चेन्नाई स्पीक आउट सीजन टू इज लॉबिंग एथिकल इट्स ऑन टू आर सेकेंड राउंड इट्स कॉल क्रॉस एग्जामिनेशन एंड टू टीम टू फर्स्ट अशोक थॉमस यू जस्ट फिनिश्ड यू स्पोक अबाउट द यूज ऑफ जर्नलिस्ट इनफैक्ट योर टीम मेट स्पोक अबाउट यूज ऑफ जर्नलिस्ट मेनी बिलीव दैट यू नो प्रिंसिपल एडिटर्स बिलीव दैट अ जर्नलिस्ट के नॉट शुड ओनली बी अ विटनेस एंड के नॉट बी अ पार्टिसिपेंट इन दिस केस अ लॉबीस्ट डज नॉट हैव पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट इन माइंड a lobbyist has only self interest that of his client a b lobbying if it's to be ethical should only succeed by force of argument not with the use of money power positions taken by companies who lobby they should be in a position to actually come out openly with it many of them don't do that and public servants you spoke about the decision makers if you ask a public servant to act beyond the call of duty to go out of the way that's when the problem arises so you are giving us a textbook definition of lobbying i am giving you a practical on the ground assessment of lobbying it is very obvious the lobbyist is taking forward what the client has uh, briefed him about hmm? now my point here is it is the decision maker who takes the call why do you blame the lobbyist it is the decision maker so he he knows where to cut off where to encourage and where to leave it now when you talk about corruption and that's not with this alone corruption cutting across body of corruption why do you look at lobbyists alone as corruption you have uh, principles of college who are corrupt you uh, when you talk about education don't go into lobbying alone all right fair enough uh, ashok now i'll come to you sure uh, jeffrey to you next it's revolving door style of lobbying because yesterday's or the retired government babu becomes a lobbyist today works for a private uh, uh, company knows the you know, the nitty gritty of you know the inside story and then is used is is a, almost an unfair advantage accruing to that private company because they use this person and he obviously has access to to his juniors or those who worked under him earlier and even as his mails pass will not obviously land up land up in the junk folder that's right sanjay isn't that what companies are doing all the while i think uh, this particular case as far as the uh, the telecom secretary is just out in the open but every company uh when they are lobbying or uh, pushing their interests across in 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 delhi or as the the places where the powers uh, maybe use people or rather use people who know people in the system to get their job done now uh in the in the maze of all the licenses and uh, all the other permissions which which a company needs to go forward as far as their prospects are concerned there are some areas which needs people in the know and the people in the know maybe someone who's retired i can i can tell you a lot of companies who use retired uh bank officials if it's an high purchase company retired persons from uh, the the as in, the, in this particular case as far as long as and in in here the telecom secretary is not working for a private limited company uh he's working for a for a for a lobbyist in in this particular instance so i don't see anything wrong if he if he is doing something legal as long as he's influencing or bribing then that's a problem i mean he was open to right, have been bribes is not going to come and tell the world that he's bribing that's the only thing okay next question to ashok thomas i spoke earlier about crisis management that's a fancy term it's actually damage control planting a story is bad enough killing a story is much worse i have had pr agencies trying to call us to say that you know can something be done let's say a worker in a factory dies and they say can something be done so we often ask them what what can you do can you bring the person back to life so you're trying to kill a story you're planting a slanted view of uh, your uh, company's perspective and in the in the bargain you're actually trying to kill truth you're corrupting trying to corrupt journalists and you're killing truth in the process okay, let me just answer it a little differently now um, when you go to That's a what they all do they, they, they answer it differently no. is what we call no, as a spin doctor i i will <laughs> I, I will come back to the point directly, yeah. but before that, um, a student applies for admission in a college, and through recommendation influence, he gets admission. And many, you know, who are much better than him have been denied. Now, what do you say for this? Journalists always come with an agenda. The same way, not always. I'm, I'm sorry, I take back. Uh, quite often, hmm? in the same way, there are PR agencies who come with an agenda. Mm. There is no doubt about it. But I am here to say is that. Is there any? Let me flip that. Is there any PR agency that doesn't come with an agenda? No, 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 no. PR agencies come with an agenda. No, no. Obviously. So you are saying all PR agencies yes, come yes, with an agenda? Yes, okay, yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. The say, yeah. So PR agencies come with an agenda, and it's my job to represent it. Again, here I'm saying it's up to you to reject it. 
Lead me not into temptation. I can find the way myself. So <laughs> if it's up to you whether you get tempted or not. Yeah. But you will you will cause that uh, temptation. Well, if you well, do, if you think that's temp temptation, that's what I said about recommendation. Now, what do you say about that? Is is that a, when the so principal takes your, a decision? Your, your recommendation. You're trying to uh, uh, jump the queue over someone correct, who has merit. Correct, but that's the way of life. If the world is bad, so let us also be bad. Okay. Don't grudge our uh, <laughs> thing. All right. <laughs> Jeffrey Thomas, uh, a sort of backdoor strategy. It suits companies. It suits the corporate goliaths of today to actually have a lobbyist whom they outsource. The lobbyist is not part of the corporate structure. When things get too hot to handle, they drop the person like a hot potato and move on. So a lobbyist is somebody who's got this cloak and they use that person effectively when they need to. Otherwise, uh, do a Pontius Pilate and wash the hands off very quietly. But is there anything wrong as long as the company is uh, doing something which interests them as long as it's not harming someone else? I think there's nothing wrong in that. I mean, we get, we get people, we get, uh, in my radio station, I get Marcom officials from... Uh, uh, public limited companies to talk about their product. I get PR officials saying, let's talk about this. Why don't you cover it? Now, I'm saying, are the, are the, uh, is there something wrong? They're asking. At the end of the day, it's my decision whether I want to put, uh, put, it, on, put it on air or not. Final question to you, Ashok uh, Thomas. Let me quote from your own, your global alliance for PR and communication management. There's a global protocol that you're supposed to follow. Don't think that you have no regulation. There is a global protocol and I quote from it. You have a, all of you are supposed to take a pledge. What is that pledge? To conduct ourselves with integrity, truth, fairness, and responsibility. When you lobby, are you in conformity with this pledge that you take or supposed to take? Personally, are you aware of the pledge in the first place? Yes, yeah. I think definitely. You've taken the pledge. No, personally, no, no, no. yes. You've personally, taken the pledge. Personally, yes. No, no, you've taken the pledge. But, yeah, within my organization. It's All not right. that you uh, do it in public. No? Okay. Yes. So you've never approached any uh, media house to kill a story? You've never? I have, I have not approached to kill a story, but I have approached media houses hmm, to understand the point of view see what happens is quite often you know either uh, what happens is when there's a negative story yes then the person goes into hiding doesn't come on record only when they have a, a product launch now they're there at the press conference mm. smiling and posing for cameras no no quite when often there's a negative story and that's when the pr agency comes in and tries to do damage control on their behalf <laughs> yes see uh, point taken what you said but then you can't keep hiding if you're doing uh, if you're doing the right pr you need to get keep communication you on can't keep, obviously you can't you keep, keep hiding Mira, i can't now Sorry, sorry. Neera Radia can't know. You obviously can't keep hiding. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I mean, Remember I, that story, I, Jeffrey I Thomas, that I you play on your radio her, station? But the point is that, you know, you, you can't keep hiding, you have to keep communication on. There's no way about it. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> team 2 now, on to Team 1. Uh, in fact, Ashok came up with a lot of statistics. Uh, I want to also again quote from the West. The Center for Congressional and Presidential Studies spent $2.13 billion on lobbying in 2004. 300 universities spent $132 million in the last six years. There are 150,000 people who are strong lobbyists in the, in the US. Right. Now, Russia, Russia paid lobbying firm Ketchum $2.9 million for, for an interview you know, on an international news channel for Putin and also got him on the uh, most, on, on, on a particular magazine's person of the year 2007 cover. All right. Malaysia, the then Prime Minister Mahathir, paid $1.2 million for an appointment with Bush. India, as he already gave you that example about lobbying and all that, in fact, that lobbying example that he gave with the company which was hired was also for the nuclear deal. Let me again ask another supplementary question. Lobbying is not a crime, you agree? It's not listed anywhere in the IPC. Your lawyer, corporate lawyer, teammate will vouch for that. Prostitution is a crime. The Supreme Court says, why can't we legalize prostitution? If that's the mindset of the highest court of the land, why are you suddenly now talking about uh, banning lobbying? Sanjay, let me try answering this. But first of all, I think uh, we have oversimplified the other group there, oversimplified the definition of lobbying. Coming to a radio station or coming to the studio here is not lobbying. I think it's by invitation. I think because you think KS can add value to the, to the conversation. And then we had the textbook definition of lobbying. I think the problem is when uh, Ashok talked about this instance of the lobbying, actually the lobbyist, taking up the case of a company to the matters to be, I have a problem there because to me, they are for sale to the highest bidder. Mm. What I mean to say is that today they would represent one company, they would take a, a, a course, and the very next year, if uh, you know, there's another company that's competing with this company, offers them more, they will switch sides. So they don't make a, there is no way that they can maintain consistency of information or the consistency of purpose that they were trying to represent. Right, first thing, answer the second bit of the question about uh, the, the prostitution example that I gave My you. problem here is that uh, 
when there is negative influence, when there is influence, when there is money changing hands, when the society at large is getting impacted and they're not getting the best what they should, to me that's a problem. That's the reason why I'm against lobbying, right? Your company has never done that. My company has never done lobbying. I've talked about advocacy. The point here is that there's a subtle difference between advocacy and, and lobbying. What is, the, what is the difference? And the difference here is that when we talk of lobbying, it's about stating your position very, very clear, right? For example, it's about asking policymakers to make us to take a specific position on a particular subject and making making sure that the others are doing the same. What about right? getting those who probably would be amenable and getting them, planting them in the ministries? Well, that's that's not that's not correct. That's not lobbying, also you're saying. Well, that is lobbying, but that's not correct. All right. That's not correct. All Absolutely. Right. Dorothy Thomas, you're smiling, I know, but. Uh, You've taken a kind of holier than thou uh, stance on the show. Let me ask you as you're a, you're a lawyer. <laughs> Today you've seen in the newspapers, yes. whether it's true or not, we will know in the course of time after an investigation, that a high court judge in another place, not in Tamil Nadu, yeah. asked or took a bribe of 9 crore rupees in a, in a high profile case. All right. Recently we have the case of Justice Raghupati, who said that uh, Union Minister Raja attempted to influence him right. in, a, in a criminal case, in an anticipatory bail hearing. There are leading lawyers of uh, Chennai who almost became judges but because a particular lobby was at work saying that he was against reservation, he was again uh, not given, not elevated to, to the bench. Many years ago, uh, there was a judge who had on his forearm the name of a political, uh, big political leader tattooed. <laughs> right. So, these are things, these are facts. There's a political party which now wants five uh, uh, judges from the one-year community to be uh, made, uh, uh, to be elevated to the bench. So, Absolutely. every uh, thing, in political uh, sphere, the legal uh, sphere, lobbying exists in some form of the, uh, some form or the other. Lobbying per se is assistance in policy and decision making. I would say PR agencies, please focus on brand building. Why are you getting into the field of, you know, assisting on legislative matters, policy making, etc. You focus on brand building and that's your sphere. Don't, we don't, uh, don't, uh, don't, you know, don't trespass exactly into our sphere. Ashok Thomas and Jeffrey Thomas have made out a case for lobbying as a profession, right? Now, uh, you know, the Ambani's and the Tata's don't pay. We, do we are told, we don't know how far this is true and, mm -hmm. you know, this is completely without, uh, you know, confirmation that Neera Radia was paid something in the range of 35 crore by each top-notch industrial house, business house in the country as a retainer fee. She's not being paid that money to talk to vegetable men, uh, vendors in the Koyambedu market. Right? So, there itself there is an inherent, the, the intention is that they want her to do something which a, no, uh, a normal PR agency, which, which, which you don't pay that much for PR functions, right? That, like that's where the organizing press conferences. The media too has advertorials. What do you say about that? Also, there is this whole attempt now, uh, Arundam Chaudhary in one of his articles calls it internet hooliganism. He says that this is 140 character, these tweets, which, uh, which are actually put out by frustrated wannabes. All right. So, what's wrong really? Are we trying to demonize uh, lobbying, which they say is another profession? If a company wants to appoint a lobbying firm or a lobbyist, then they must state the lobby position of that company in the sense that there must be a corporate statement. Most companies have what they call corporate social responsibility. Correct. Yes. Corporate social responsibility is not about just adopting an orphanage or whatever. It's also framing your internal code of ethics. Do you have anything in your company? Uh, that forbids that uh, that that prohibits lobbying of uh, of the kind that we are witnessing in the country. Of course, we do have because as, as a listed company, we are mandated by certain behaviour and we got to behave in a certain fashion. No, so, but then the fact that they are asking Ministry of Corporate Affairs is asking companies to strong with the idea of asking companies to list lobbyists. That means several companies have lobbyists. No, see, again, it depends on the nature of the industry. For example, uh, you know, having you know, coming from a software company, right? So. I think uh, we have a very strong uh, advocacy group which is in the form of a trade, trade organization, NASCOM, right? So they represent the interests of the organization very well. You have not hired individual bloggers? No, we don't have anybody. No individual bloggers? Not to the best of my knowledge. Okay, okay. <laughs> Dorothy Thomas, next to you. Lobbying for a cause, yeah. uh, lobbying to, to facilitate a vigorous public debate for an informed decision to be made. I'll give you an example uh, a few years ago. The Biscuit Manufacturers Association sent out letters to various MPs, routed letters from various MPs to the HRD ministry asking them to replace that hot cooked uh, midday meal with a packet of 100 grams of biscuits. Right? This is right. a case of, of, of lobbying, Propagate, right, pr promoting, projecting your client's point of view. Absolutely. The reason why they did it is that because they don't have a forum. They ha every person needs a forum to, you know, approach. We don't have a regularized forum at this point of time. You gave me statistics just a few minutes back of each 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 country, you know, how much they spend, how many lobbyists get into. Can we give a provide a statistics for India? We don't have. 
we don't have how much money is spent out we don't have how many we don't know who the lobbyists are the so called lobbyists everybody comes in i am a pr agency i am a lobbyist i am a external affairs minister i am a lobbyist 2.5 so million dollars is what they paid bgr you yeah, want so to we figures know, yeah well that's that has come out because there's an issue there okay mm. but otherwise the public has no access to it public so that's public. why we need a body we need a regulatory body so if any industry has an issue or a problem <laughs> they need to approach it in a very uh, regulated <laughs> fashion perception management now i'll give you an example like most of these lobbyists or pr companies which also do lobbying you know they they work on uh, for instance opposition to mnc is coming to the market and mm -hmm. i'll tell you in the late 80s uh, seagram a foreign uh, liquor brand which right. came in was trying to come in then there was roger pereira you know uh, a leading uh, light in the profession who then gave it a different spin saying that india is the largest exporters of fruits and seagram had plans to enter the the fruit juice market here and that that was a way of actually uh, you know changing mindsets shattering any kind of stigma that may be associated with a particular brand mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. wrong with that public relations is a beaten down word what is public relations to me it is the way i would look at uh, public relations is that i am not visible i stand for a cause i have some goodwill i need this firm to represent my interest to take care of my goodwill propagate my goodwill across i think that's 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 the spirit with which public relations firms came into being right no okay now, fine perception so you're probably trying to say they should be good samaritans he should be a good samaritan he should be a no no i'm not i'm saying being a nice samaritan that's fine but the point here is that whether it's a perception management i don't really care but to me as long as it is for a good cause uh, I don't have a problem with it. Time now to get into a short break on SL Chennai speaks out when you come back. In fact, both the teams his observation as well as their rebuttals will come up in the next round. It's called Crossfire. Stay tuned.